Two critics in the parking lot. Instant movie review. Steve Samuels here at the Tribeca Film Festival. We're actually at the pre-screening right now for the movie Detachment. Adrian Brody, uh, directed by Tony Kay, Blythe Danner is in this movie, and a bunch of other people that, quite frankly, I don't know who they are. But we're actually on the red carpet right now, and we're going to get to meet some of them in just a few moments. Well, in general, the what I try to, what I strive for in, in, the, in the films that I choose is to find things that have some kind of impact on me. Am I, and, 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 and that also have some, some something socially relevant that that touches us on a deeper level and, and and has some importance. It's fun to do films for entertainment, and and I'm not opposed to doing that. But as an artist, I'm I'm much more drawn to material that you know speaks about the complex issues that we all deal with in life, and our children deal with, and our families deal with, and our loved ones, and. And this film, in particular, touched me very deeply. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, really through my character's eyes, who's a, a substitute teacher. But it, it really brings light to the many flaws in the public education system. Um, and I don't have the answers, and the, the film doesn't necessarily have the answers. It's, it, it just is something that we have to be conscious of. Um, for our future, for our children's well-being, to create an environment that inspires learning, um, that is not full of hostility and threats of violence, and uh, you know all the pressures that exist for young people today are, are tremendous, and they were when I was young. I went to public school in New York, but you know we need we need our teachers, we need good teachers, and we need. Uh, a place for our children to really find themselves and to become more curious about the world around them, the rest of the world, and not and not um, be consumed with whatever it is that distracts them from the world, whether it's a little text or a video game or whatever, which which is okay in certain doses, but we cannot lose track of that goal to, to really make it interesting, to, to teach why it's important, to understand other cultures, to, you know, and that's what's wonderful about New York. That's what's an amazing, amazing city, but, you know, if you go to certain countries, states, they're, they're insulated. In that respect, you need to kind of create open-mindedness and all these things and a home for Thank kids. Thanks, Adrian. So I'm with Lucian. What, what's your role in the movie? Um, well, I think the most I can say is that I'm the homicidal cat-killing youngster. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. And where did that come from inside of you? My goodness. I think it speaks more than the name, but, uh, you know, it's just, it just proves the detachment of the high school, you know, that the movie, you know, encompasses. But um, for all intents and purposes, like, I'm just emotionally screwed up. I'm just detached. Like, I just want to hurt things, apparently. So, so how was that emotionally for you to play that role? I don't know. I really had to get animalistic. I, I don't know. I, I had to just, like, we had to do take after take, and I just, you know, got really out of breath, you know? Yeah. It was just, it beat the, sh like, the hell out of me. I was, you know. Yeah, no, that's all right. <laughs> I'm about to say something. Yeah, so, so when you were, when you were finishing after, like, 9, 10, 12 takes, you were just destroyed. Yeah, I, I really, like, got into the part. I'm really proud of my performance, you know? Tony Kay uh, directed one of the greatest movies ever, American History X. He's extremely like, eccentric but like talented director. He he just like he brings it to another level. Like like, like he he'll just tear down things. Like like he just has this vision, you know. And, and and he'll just like he'll just have like this other sense that other people like almost aren't aware of until he just you know tells them to just do it and then then they'll be like you know they're confused until they do it and they realize that it's like really good is he one of those directors though that you go to you go to the set with with your lines and he just shakes you up when you get there yeah 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 if he doesn't like it he'll be like what the hell are you doing you know he say he's that kind of director most of my directors have been you know 20 something maybe maybe 30 something but like you know unshaven like oh you can do it man this guy gets, has a Castro thing going on you're kind of feeling better in your skin now obviously you're more comfortable as an actor now and so it allows you to give more, I'm assuming, as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just got to see my limits. I have to see like where I can go. You know, I, I don't want to stay like a character actor. You know. Right. 
Dude, thank you so much. It was really good talking. Thank I look you. forward thank to the you. movie. Look for uh, my name is Celia Al, and I played Ellen. Okay. My name is Samantha J. Logan, and I played Spitting Daughter. <laughs> I, I Weird that, name, right? I, I saw that. I saw that on IMDb. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is up? I'm Ralph Rodriguez. I'm and one of the students, also Garcia. So check it out, <laughs> guys. Um, you've got a director that directed one of the greatest movies ever, American History X. Have you guys seen love it? Love that movie. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that so, movie. Oh my okay, gosh. That movie was intense. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So I gotta figure. I gotta just figure this guy is just out there. Genius. Yeah, Genius. What, 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 was, what was like some of the most poignant moments that you guys can remember of shooting the movie? Can you get During that? my scene, um, I actually had to be this aggressive, nasty student towards Christina Hendricks. And at one point, Tony K just had the camera right in front of my face. And I had to like... Like here? Yeah, like right here, like right in front of my face. Tony and I has had his to weird like, ways of doing stuff. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I had to like curse at Christina Hendricks and spit in her face. Yeah. So he had me like spit at the camera and curse at it and yell at it. And he was like yelling at me to try to get this character to come out. Drinking like me. old bottles of water to keep hydrated. Right? <laughs> and he only had me spit once, left, but it was know? still intense. But um, yeah, he just, I mean, he like totally brought the character out of me. It was totally against hype for me. Yeah, I, I'm a nice person, so to play this really yeah, aggressive really, yeah. she, she is. student yeah, was she is. just, yeah. Yeah. he really brought that character out of me, and it was just... I've, I've heard stories that he actually lets you guys come to the set totally prepared and just rips it out of you. That, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Throughout the whole time I was doing my scenes, I don't even think we kept to the script. He just yeah. said, you know what, go with it, act like students. Yeah, he, he That's it. Like so I was like, all right. I was like, all right, I'll be a badass. Like, <laughs> so, so, are all you guys kind of angry kids in this movie? Is that? Is that I, I played a skimpy girl. Okay. So, um, is that your character's name? No, my character's name is Ellen. Okay, all right. So I was like a skimpy okay, girl. Spitting girl and skimpy girl. I just, you know. Yeah. Spitting <laughs> daughter. Spitting oh, daughter. Spitting daughter. daughter. Yeah. Um. So uh, I had to curse at James Khan. And that was really interesting. And then Tony, again, was like camera right in front of my face. and was like, all right, just keep on cursing. And I'm like, okay. And so I'm like, I haven't cursed so much in my life before, but that was awesome. Definitely going to go to church now. So um, <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming that for all you guys, this took you to another level about being actors. Am I right about that? Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, you know, just starting acting at this age, I just... It's so real for me to be able to be in a film with an amazing cast and an amazing director. Yeah. It's just... Well, well, the, the buzz is just badass on this. I, I, I'm, I'm, well, we're seeing it tomorrow, and I'm, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys in the thing, though. So thank you very much. I, I'm with Betty Kay from the movie Detachment, and uh, would you tell me who you, what your role is in the movie? I play a 17-year-old high school student who's very much broken and is looking for someone to inspire her to be a better person and to pick up the pieces. Aren't, aren't you, uh, we didn't get to see the movie yet, but, but in researching it, aren't you like one of the main people that changes Adrian Brody yes. in this movie. Yes. And so and so it seems like a lot of the kids in the movie played the, play the kids. A lot of anger and a lot of just yeah, angst there's, in there. Yeah, there's a lot of teen angst and a lot of searching for hope and searching for inspiration. And I think that the you know, the children who were in the kids, they're young women and young men mm -hmm. who are in this film, they did such an amazing job on Developing their characters and sticking by it. Oh, just being really true to that. Yeah, you know, being very, very true to that character. Now, isn't this one of your first like big major yes. roles? Yes. So you're just like. I am oh. over the moon. Have you seen the movie yet? No, I haven't. No I way. haven't seen the final cut. How excited are you? I am. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait to get into that theater and watch it. I'm excited to meet you because here, this is you, the very moment before you're about to see this amazing movie, and we're capturing this, and I just think that's beautiful. Yeah, and that's so I'm exciting. so excited. Well, listen, it was very, very nice, very meeting. nice meeting. Enjoy you. the movie. Thank you so much. Well, I'm with Sammy Gale right now, and and you're from Detachment. Now, tell me what your character is in this movie. <laughs> in this movie, I play a teeny, teenage prostitute slash wild runaway. Okay. So. So basically, every kid in this movie is internally damaged, and Adrian Brody's like saving everybody. It seems like is that is that what? It, am I, I haven't seen the movie yet. Well, when you see the movie. He doesn't quite save everybody, but he saves me. Now, and now you, um, Tony Kay is a director. What was that like for you? Was that an intense experience? It was the most amazing experience. I mean, Tony is such, he sees, he sees things in a different way than I think 
any other person does. And he makes films that are just beyond incredible. American History X, did you ever see that? I, don't know if I did see that film, which is exquisite. It's phenomenal. Amazing. Now, so you have a lot of your scenes with Adrian Brody. Yes. One of the, one of the finest all actors. All of my that, scenes. Well, there's two Johns, but besides that, it's all Adrian. I mean, one of the finest actors of our time. I absolutely. As, as an actor as well. What, what was that? What, what, did you, what did you take away from that? Oh, God, I took away so many things. I mean, Adrian taught me. He, I, I, This is my first film. I mean, I've done three films since then. Right now, I'm working on one with Nick Cage. But, um... This is my first film, so I feel like Adrian really taught me the base of acting. Uh, I, I think that one of the most important things he taught me was about intimacy, how you never need to you know, be afraid to not speak very loudly. You know, everything is very, it has to be very real and connected. And that was one of the biggest things that I took away from this. But Adrian mentored me through the entire process. Do, do you have to be bigger on film than you think your role should be because the camera kind of sucks it down a bit, do you think? No, and that is exactly what Adrian taught me, was that that is the most important thing, that you do not need to be big because it's a camera and you want to play to the camera. You shouldn't be playing to the camera. You need to be playing to the person and be present in the scenes. And that was an amazing lesson that I learned from Adrian. Put all together. Thank you so much. I think the you know, when you go into any project, you have to be as creative as you possibly can and as rid of your own ego as, as you possibly can. And, and to be in control of yourself and out of control of the bigger picture or pictures or motion pictures and 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 so that you can access the, the power of light, the flickering lights going through a movie projector on E Dolby stereo with sound. <laughs> because actually sound is more important than picture. And I just like to talk about the color red. Because this movie is all about the color red. The emotion of the color? Or the color itself? It's all, I don't know. I don't know. It's all about the color red. Do you feel that you have to deconstruct your actors as they hit the set before you film? Just kind of tear them apart a bit to get the most like visceral experience out of them? I'm a slave to uh, performance artists. Yes. You know, I, I don't even like the word actors and I don't like acting and and uh, you know every every character and actually my wife commented um, she my wife has seen a few little bits and pieces and my wife commented about all the performances from you know the, the from all the characters all the faces and the people and the, you know I, I, I'm like a kind of a butterfly catcher with a, a and, and net with, but my net has a lens on the end of it and, and what I try to do is to capture their, their, their souls and, and um, so, so I, I'm not I'm, you know like brick building brick building brick building and sandals making walls or roofs, no roofs, roofs and sandals were the two most important jobs in the biblical times, you know. And I don't know what I'm talking about now. I do know what I'm talking about, but but I don't want to break anyone or anything You're doing quite down. Good. Oh, okay. Thank you.